I guess, buffs from here. And today let's talk about my leak starter for Torchlight Infinite, which is my Ring of Ice Yuga. Now, people who are following the channel know that Torchlight Infinite is sort of like my go-to game whenever I'm burned out of PoE. And two days ago, we had the global launch of the game, uh, and I was kind of preparing for it. I even wrote an article for Max Roll, and it was exactly this build that I kind of predicted would be pretty damn strong. And it's sort of like a cold caster that has built-in mechanics that automatically activates Ring of Ice, which is our main skill. And as well as that, we're playing a class that makes a clone, or in this case, a illusion of yourself. And you can think of this sort of like a Mirage Archer from PoE, but for spellcasters. And it just makes for an incredibly fun playstyle. Now, play this build from zero to where you see it right now. So if you're somebody who wants to jump into this game in between PoE and D4, kind of want to check it out. I think this is a perfect build to get into it. It's very new player friendly, very forgiving, and also incredibly fun. All right, let's first talk about the character that I chose, which is Yuga. Now, my main skill right here is Ring of Ice. And whenever you cast a spell and it kills an enemy, you have a chance to kind of proliferate its effect across the screen. So the sort of Herald of Ice explosions you saw in the intro is because you have a 66% chance whenever you kill an enemy to kind of get these across the screen. And the second reason why you see so many of them triggering uh, is because of Spellburst right here. This is a new mechanic that has been introduced this league. Now, Spellburst is something they introduced this league because spellcasters in general were a little bit weak and they needed some help. And this not only helped spellcasters in particular, but also Yuga even more. We'll talk about that in a second. But basically, what this does is the following. The condition is you have to cast a spell. And then the effect is you copy that spell an amount of times. And the amount of times depends on how much spellburst stacks you have so if you've seen the upper corner right here it says spellburst i five maximum charges and whenever i cast you see that it takes a little bit of time to get back to full if you play poe you can think about it as unleash but op now spellburst recovers in two seconds always and that doesn't matter how many stacks you have so it's not per stack it's always from zero to whatever your maximum is it takes two seconds which means that recharge speed is incredibly valuable and what we're kind of doing is we're combining this with the new play safe talent. This talent makes it so that 100% of increases and decreases to cast speed apply to spell burst recharge. So for example, if you have 100% cast speed, these two seconds right here actually go to one second. And in our case, we have a lot more in total. It takes around about 0.6 to 0.7 seconds for me to get my full spell burst back. Here's the kicker though. We have a second buddy right here. This is my illusion. This is my hero trait, so to say. So if we go to here the hero menu you see that we're playing yuga and at level 13 he comes with sort of a buddy that you have to summon basically every map and he stays forever he doesn't have a duration you just have to respawn it whenever you get into a new zone so the interesting thing about this guy is if you look at my spell burst charges right here you will see that he actually applies spell burst himself right you can see this right here so if we get him right here he applies spell burst but as you can see here he does not take it from my spell burst charges he has Spellburst charges on his own, which results in something pretty crazy, basically meaning that Spellburst double dips for the build. I will skip leveling in this video because I already made a full written guide about this. So if you want to check this out, I will link it down in the description. Important thing to know is that this will uh, be a little bit different to what I'm going to show you right now, simply because it is a leveling guide. And what I show here is kind of like mid end game. And something you have to know in this game is that up until level 80, you can respec all of your passive points for free, which means you have a lot of flexibility to just basically go a certain way that's really good for leveling and then respec into something, in our case, crit later. So yeah, link is down in the description, but the first thing we're going to go over is our passives. So we start with Goddess of Knowledge. Now, whenever you're leveling at level, I think 11, you're going to get Beacon, and this is your first big power spike. This is where the build will start to feel amazing, and then at level 13, you will get your hero trade, which is this one here you will get your copy and then it's just basically over. The second talent we take will be Burning Touch. Now you can go inside. I've actually quite enjoyed being immune to Frostbite. This is a little bit more damage. The additional cost doesn't really matter. Just kind of a preference. We go from damage to attack and cast speed to crit. Now while leveling, you will go differently, but you will see that in the leveling section. Um, we as soon as possible want to get this, um, the cold damage into Frostbite. Um, we just take these as sort of like traveling points to get this point right here, which gives you 100% chance to get a focus blessing. You can get up to four. So if you have all up, that's 16% chance to deal double damage. Plus some other effects down the line. Uh, the second thing you want to take as soon as possible is actually max spell burst charge speed. At this point, we do not have the Magister node yet, right? That gives us um, cast speed applies to recharge speed. You want to get all the raw recharge speed, right? Until we get there. 
And that is really important. You're going to even skip the plus one spell skill level because it's just so important to get into your next tree. You're going to take this later. Now, then we go into Magistar. And Magistar, in terms of the points here, is kind of like decent, but not crazy. But the big thing is really that we want to get play safe. And you can get this later even without picking Magistar. We can talk about that. But for now, that is definitely not an option. So first you get, go Bunch. It gives you a plus one maximum focus blessing. So now you have 20% chance to do double damage. And you get 3% additional spell damage per charge. So another 15% more. Basically, you pop through here. You go for spell damage, cast speed, AoE, crit, aura effect. Aura effect basically only because you don't really have anything better to take. The points in this tree at some point get pretty flaccid. I'm also taking max mana up here. Up to 34 points, it's pretty fine, but to fill up to 36, it's kind of rough. You go for cast speed, you go for the this and this, whatever. Very important to get is the maximum spell burst. One of the craziest points you can get on the tree, as well as that the 5% crit damage per focus charge. That's another 25 crit damage on top. In general, this is even more max spell burst speed. And once you're at level 36 with this one, you will basically recharge incredibly fast. And also, not only will this increase your damage, it will also make the build feel better, right? So third up, we have Ranger. Now, while leveling, you want to go Elementalist. Check that out in the leveling guide. But here, what we're looking for is Ranger because Ranger has incredibly good passives down here. The talents are okay, but not crazy. Uh, one thing I want to say is that you usually want to keep it up probably over impending, but I have impending from somewhere else. I'm just to not confuse you, uh, leave the keep it up right here. Our talents are first fluke. Critical strikes have the lucky effect. So this is basically just means that your damage has a certain range, right? So for example, if your damage deals 100 to 150, let's say it calculates 120, but with lucky, it rolls a second time. And if that's 140, then it takes the higher amount. Not crazy strong. This is definitely the complete opposite of Magistar. Magistar is all in the talents. This one, the talents are like, okay, but the tree is incredible. So the second one here is keep it up. This gives you critical strike rating per fervor. If you come from PoE, this is basically like getting base crit. And fervor is something that we get from our gloves. It gives us a ton of critical strike strike chance and now also the added critical strike on top and we can amplify this even further with fervor effect if you have no problems with crit you can also go for impending it's basically like 30 percent more damage to nearby enemies which is quite strong now as for the ranger tree in general it just has so many good notes it's like damage 30 percent damage right here right life and energy shield right crit here crit damage there Attack and cast speed. And as you can see here, this has always some small stuff attached, like even more movement speed, AoE area damage, right? More max life, Ellie res. This node here in particular is absolutely incredible. 10% less damage taken to nearby enemies. Absolutely insane. As well as that, the regain, the faster regain. It's basically like leech. And then you also get a ton of critical strike damage. And at the end here, you even get a sort of culling strike effect. Now, as for skills, Ring of Ice is our main skill. But I just want to point out, you can play around with whatever you want. Spellburst is strong enough to kind of carry you through the leveling phase. So that is a good time to kind of experiment with other skills. Maybe you can figure out something that is more fun for you. But Ring of Ice in terms of strength is just so, so good. It has very high single target damage while having incredible clear. And yes, there are certain things like, for example, Blizzard that on paper do have more single target damage. However, they're a lot worse while clearing. But that's why I'm saying you can definitely experiment around, right? But if you want to follow this, Psychic Burst is incredibly strong. Freeze Chance, all the good more multipliers we have right here. Then we have Fixate, which is basically like a activation skill that marks nearby enemies upon casting. Mark basically means they take more critical strike damage and they have less evasion, which the evasion doesn't really matter, but it's just more critical strike damage. And it also gives us a chance to deal double damage. Very strong effect, especially with some of these supports. As for Frigid Transmission, this is our main movement skill. I'll give you a showcase a little bit later in the video. And basically, this just resets all the time because of how the skill works. So whenever we freeze an enemy, refresh skill cooldown upon inflicting freeze in any situations. It has four charges, right? Because we stack them on some effects, which we're going to go over a little bit later. But basically... Every spell burst counts. So whenever I cast, I reset all four charges. So I can just like zoom around like crazy. And the thing is, my illusion also counts towards this. So if I just zoom around while my illusion casts, I reset the cooldown of this. It's just incredible, right? We have some support skills. 
who kind of um, make that a little bit stronger. Then we have Mana Boil. Uh, this is basically just a more multiplier to your spells and it drains a little bit of your mana. It's basically just free damage. Now then we have Life Source, which is sort of our like health pot kind of thing. The biggest thing about this build is that it has really poor recovery. So that kind of makes up for that. It doesn't really help all that much against bosses. You can activate it like three times, but after that it's kind of gone or two times. Now, if you have something better here, you can go for something like, I don't know, Compound Potion. Play around with it. This has worked for me so far, but I'm mostly mapping, right? Then we have Curse on Hit here, which has Biting Cold, which basically just debuffs enemies. This also reserves a portion of our mana. Uh, as well as that, we have Auto Defense right here with Obscure. This gives us Blur, which gives us chance to avoid hits outright. And as you can see right here, there's still stuff that I can do, but I'm not really sure what to do right now. I will min-max this over time. So these are basically trigger skills, right? So I trigger this one automatically and I trigger curses automatically. And then our only two really auras are magical source. This is basically our whole mana sustain. It is absolutely insane. Level it as fast as possible. And then we have elemental amplification, which is just a more multiplier to your skills. Then let's talk about our hero trait and our relic and memories. Quick, something I want to notice is the wording on this character is kind of confusing. If you don't know, Twisted Space Time is basically this circle right here. And as long as you're in it, you get certain buffs and debuffs on yourself, which in total you always want to be in here. But that's usually not a problem because your copy will kind of teleport to you if you're too fast. The traits we take at level 13, obviously, we get our illusion right so up to level 13 don't be confused why you don't have your illusion yet it's basically just a ground effect that gives you some buffs at level 13 you're starting to pop off then we take field effect which just gives us additional cast speed and additional spell damage for our illusion which is quite strong our probably biggest part no our biggest power spike is later but this one here means that 25 percent of your cast speed also applies to your illusion if you don't know it usually does not but this one is very strong and we also get up to 40% cooldown recovery, which is obviously very strong for our cooldown skills like our active skills or our movement skill, but not too big, right? Um, but here is where stuff starts to get strong. First up, we get 40% more damage at a small cost right here. It subtracts a little bit of your mana, but that does not do anything. As long as you have a magical source, you're going to be fine. Uh, you can also get some mana region from your pets. And then we have Twisted Field. Now, the level 80s are usually the biggest kind of power spikes in general. I guess you guys can see it perfectly. So let me go a little bit to the side right here. Now, what this does is this is basically the red ring you see right here. You see, if I get if I go out of it a little, which I can't right now, it goes blue. If you start out, your circle will also be blue. But because of this here, it goes red. And that's because it gives you a downside, but also a huge upside. So up to six seconds. So this stacks up to six times. If you're on six stacks, this gives you 12% more damage taken. So that's pretty bad. But you get 75% more damage, which is just completely insane. And it does reset whenever you leave. So against bosses, you just want to stay inside. However, with how much radius we're scaling for our main skill anyways, you can also see this twisted space time also grows. As for relics, now I'm not 100% sure these are the best in slot right here. And some of them are just something I bought because of budget. However, we tested quite a bit of this on the target dummy. This effect here is incredible. While inside space time, you have a stacking buff once again, which is very strong. And then you have hero memory effect. So this just increases the effect of all your memories over here. Talking about memories, we have the additional space time illusion damage, which I think is on all three our memories. This is basically the best that you can get. And then also get either cast speed or max spell burst speed. Both are basically the same because they get converted. They are both incredibly strong. Now, if you want to wait to upgrade your stuff here, I just want to tell you that this will more than double your damage in general. So if you're like me, I basically took this off until like level 94. If you're looking for more damage and if you're like, why is he dealing like 130 mil damage? and I'm dealing like 5 million, you have to start getting into some of these mechanics, and this is one of them. Then we have our statue of the new god tree. So this is basically the Tetris of this league. It's down here, as you can see. It is basically our fourth passive tree, right? And it is this Tetris board uh, that you can sort of configure as you want. And it consists of these puzzle pieces, which can all be crafted to give you certain effects. And this is something that people put off because it's new and it's kind of complicated, but it's something you want to get into as soon as possible. You get these from the league mechanic. If you're wondering why mine have like four or five stats, you can go over here to the crafter brand divinity slate. And once you start crafting it, it becomes character, or I think account bound actually. So you can't 
traded anymore. But for example, if I put this in here and I start branding, you can see here I get extra effects, right? In this case, I got a little bit unlucky a few times. Uh, you can see your branding attempts, right? I can craft as often as uh, I have branding attempts and I'm just going to get extra effects. So if you do this, right, these these materials are pretty easy to get and you can get quite a bit of stats here. We're talking like, I don't know, probably 50, 60% more damage for almost no work. So this is a mechanic that you want to engage with as soon as possible, but I'm going to show you what I have here. So there is pedigree of the gods. Let me put myself a little bit over here. Now this one uh, drops from the traveler and it can give you a sort of talent, a big talent. So in case here, I have keep it up, right? As I said earlier, the reason I go for impending is because I get keep it up somewhere else. This is where I get it from, right? And I also get plus one max energy charges. This helps a lot with my movement skill in particular to kind of give me smooth transitions. It gives me a little bit of radius. Now, I'm only going to point out the most important stats here because there's a lot of like throwaway stuff like crit, life, stuff like that. But really important stats is plus one max spell burst. These were very expensive, but they're going down and down and down. So definitely get this one as soon as you have the currency for it. You want plus one to all skill levels. This you can only get once, but it is incredibly strong. Uh, you can also get plus one to cold. This basically only applies to your main skill. However, that's still 10% more damage or something. And you can stack these if you want to. It does not specify that you can only have one. And then at the end, I also get this one right here. And the mod that's the most important here is the 20% chance to gain tenacity and agility blessing when receiving a focus blessing. This means that on top of the focus blessings I already get, I also get 16% less damage taken. I get, what's that? 24 attack speed, 24 cast speed, and 24% movement speed. So just incredibly strong. And that also transitions into 26% faster spell burst recharge as for gear now most of these are actually self-crafted other than the uniques the uniques i will point out right here ralph's engraving this one is basically only there to give me fervor a little bit of life fervor effect that's fine if you have a lot of fe's you can also buy rare gloves with fervor but that's going to cost you like 100 fe plus so this is definitely the budget alternative these started like three fe's they're just incredible if you don't know, Fervor basically gives you 200% increased critical strike chance. That is for spells and attacks. And all the Fervor effect stacks on top of that. If you can get it, Heavy Wear is incredibly strong. Gives you more damage, less damage taken, and some very strong stats in general. It is quite pricey though. So until you get there, just do a self-crafted rare chest. And all the other gear I basically crafted myself. Some of them are really, really bad. Now, usually what you do with crafting ever since the changes is... You buy a base that has like one mod that you want and then you start rolling. Now, I can't explain crafting to you in this whole video, maybe another time. But basically what I went for is I wanted wands, right? If you can get it, a wraith wand with additional damage for skills cast by spellburst. And then you just go from there. As you can see right here, I have stats that are basically useless. This is not great at all. I put a little bit of crit damage at the end here. I enchanted it on, right? But as you can see, not really anything crazy. Same here. I started with this mod and then I got a few other mods on top. I did the same thing with the helmet. I started with the life here. Was pretty lucky to roll into the other tier 1 life. But no real damage mods. And after that, we also have the Ami, which is terrible, right? I started with plus 1 skull, uh, cold skills. And I kind of just left it here because I was like, okay, I get a little bit of life, a little bit of risk. That's fine with me. My belt is solo cell found. At level 20, I found this belt and I'm still using it. So as you can see here, not exactly anything fancy. These ones I bought the base. So I bought this one for the plus one max mobility charges. This makes your mobility skill a lot just smoother to play. And then I just re-rolled until I got kind of this combination. It's not great but it's better than nothing. Uh, my rings are just there to give me a little bit more increased damage as well as resistances, right? Uh, as you can see here, I always get the life note, uh, the life mod because this build is just kind of squishy. You don't have really uh, a crazy defensive mechanism, some crazy talent. So as long as you get life on your gear, you'll be fine, right? But if that is not the case, then you kind of have a problem. I also have two mana restored on hit, but in reality, this doesn't really make much of a difference. Our mana is kind of sorted out, but if you can get it, that's nice to have. And yeah, that's basically the gear. As for pets, I don't know what pets you have, so it's kind of hard to explain. I'm just going to go over some basics. You want to get elemental resistances as soon as possible. These are incredibly strong to get kind of in the mid to end game. 
um, until you have enough kind of gear to do it without pets. Because end game, all you want to do is spam your whole tree with as much drop quantity as you can, right? The base tree already has qu uh, quantity down here, but you can also have pets that give you even more quantity. Um, that just depends on what you got, right? You can also go for more damage or something. So that's basically what your pet is going to be for. While you're leveling, the drop quantity doesn't do anything. You don't really drop the good currency until you're in maps. So just ignore this completely and just get stats that are relevant for your character. All right, so let's give you a showcase of the build real quickly. It is quite easy to do. So I'm quickly going to go into this map. I also have a boss lined up so you can see that as well. But like I said, it is pretty easy and brain dead to play. Whenever you get into a map, I kind of don't do this anymore, but if you feel like you're weak, you can kind of spam your skills. Uh, whenever you spend mana, you can see right here, the um, bar here fills up. And whenever you press E, you summon your copy. And then you just go on and basically explode everything on the screen. So as you can see here, we're kind of made as a sort of like a speed mapper. However, you would be surprised the single target damage is a lot better than usually these builds have. Our two weaknesses, one is a pretty big weakness, which is recovery. Our recovery is pretty weak. We're kind of relying on like on life source right here, which during bossing can get a, bit, a little bit iffy, but it's usually not really a problem if you kind of, uh, if you kind of know the mechanics. However, defenses in tier eight maps are pretty rough. Now, if you never played this game before, tier eights are basically not all that mandatory. You can just spam tier seven maps and you're going to make a very good currency and upgrade your build. But as we are right now, we can die in tier 8 maps. But before I show you a map quickly, the target dummy DPS right here. So we have to kind of get him here. All right. As you can see here, the damage is ramping up pretty quick. There's not crazy delays. However, over time, you will get some extra buffs because your fervor first has to ramp to 100. So right now, it already ramped to 100. Uh, we're around about 130 to 140 mil DPS currently. Also, at the start of the map, you definitely want to press mana boil once. You never really go to zero mana, so it's just going to be up during the whole map, as well as that fixate whenever you have a rough enemy. I'm quickly going to show you the boss right here. Now, bossing is pretty self-explanatory. The only downside of having a kind of melee Ice Nova Ring of Ice skill on your illusion is whenever you go a little bit further away from the boss, your illusion doesn't really... How should I say? Your illusion doesn't really... Sometimes just follows you around, right? Which is kind of bad. You want him to be on the boss. And you just kind of just want to kite around. But as you can see here, you can do this pretty well. Now he's... Uh, we basically already went through two of his phases um, without him even realizing. So let's see if we're going to die here or not. Should be fine for now. All right. We're going to stand here. Quickly do this. And once this is over... Uh, we're just going to one-shot him. As you can see right here, whenever he gets to 8% HP, he automatically dies. All right, now let's talk about end-end game scaling. Right now, I have around about 300 of these into the build. My items are pretty bare bones. I did invest quite a bit into stuff like memories and the new passive tree. But in terms of my main gear, it is absolutely dark. But I will give you some pointers. Now, first thing to note is you can go to hero ranking and basically look at builds that are doing something similar to you. You can search for skill, right? You can search for ring of ice. You can search for the character. Also, there's a, a ton of gemmas that are also using ring of ice. So that will be incredibly helpful for some inspiration. But to give you some pointers right here, mana stacking. I don't know much about it. I just know it's incredibly strong, a ton of damage, and you're also hyper tanky. Then I can see this build maybe going into a Shadow of Thunderlight's Fury kind of build. This gives you critical strike damage per maximum spell burst. So that's very, very good synergy with the build. It would kind of go into lightning direction. Now, whether you actually want to go for lightning and cold, or whether you want to convert, or whether you're going to go for a different main skill, that's for you to try out. And the third thing that is the most obvious, but also crazy expensive, uh, would be Jumble Ice. Let me quickly find it. So Jumble Ice is one of the biggest, biggest, uh, chase items in this game currently um this <laughs> just so you know this basically gives you uh per focus blessing gives you a ton of spell damage flat damage critical strike rating it is just absolutely insane if you can get your hands on two of these i mean this build will deal a billion damage easy so this would probably be the craziest version of the build however also the most unrealistic so at the end here what are the upsides and what are the downsides of this build in general this is a really fast cast replaced up with great map clear and like sort of explosions now 
I've played this game for three leagues now, so three different league starters, and this is by far the best. It was the first league starter where I was really like, this could be an endgame build as well, instead of when can I finally reroll? And it starts at level 13, actually kind of at level 11, whenever you get your spell burst. But once you get your buddy and he also spell bursts, I mean, it's just an absolute joy to play. And it can easily unlock everything needed for endgame farming. And that is basically everything up to tier 7. Now, if you don't know, the jump from tier 7 to tier 8 is quite harsh. And with my gear, I can easily do tier 8 right now. However, I already have like 300 of these into the build. So if you're new, tier 7s are going to be very, very possible. And the jump from tier 7 to tier 8 we're talking like times 10. And the reasons why tier 8s can be harsh at the very end is because of the downsides, which is life recovery and defenses. So life recovery is the biggest downside of this build. It's kind of hard to regain stuff. Life regain is there, but it's not very strong. And you kind of like, uh, you kind of have to do with life source, which while mapping is totally fine, but against bosses can be kind of scuffed. And it's squishy if not properly geared, as you can see right here. I made sure that I have a life roll on basically everything and I'm not dying. I got to 96 just pretty damn easily. However, if you're not very experienced at the game, that might be hard for you. But I just want to make that clear. We're talking about end game. You're not really going to feel that at all during the first, I don't know, 10 to 20 hours of your gameplay. But yeah, uh, I'm really enjoying my time right now. The Lee mechanic is super, super fun. I'll talk about it in another video. We're going to talk about how to make easy currency this league. So if this is the first time you're exposed to Torchlight, don't worry. I'm not going to let you hang. I'm going to tell you how to make some currency and get into these proper end game items quite soon. But with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.